Welcome back to Better Health, brought to you by the Southern District Health Board. Now in the show we have a look at Dunedin Hospital's dialysis unit. So my name is Blair Donkin and I'm the Acting Associate Charge Nurse Manager for the dialysis unit for the Southern DHB. Uh, which obviously covers from North Otago right down to Stewart Island if we need to and through to Central Otago. Uh, so we have approximately 94 to 95 patients on home dialysis um, and, and at any one time there would be five or six training and then a, a number of other patients here for various reasons. But our philosophy is home dialysis, whether that's peritoneal or hemodialysis. So dialysis is what we call a form of renal replacement therapy. So the idea is that when the kidneys stop functioning, part of that kidney function has to be picked up in terms of removing fluid and what I tend to call chemical cleaning of the blood. There's substances that build up in the blood as a result of eating and activity and metabolism that need to be cleared. And when the kidneys cease to do that, we, that can either be done through a machine that runs blood through a circuit and through a filter, an uh, artificial filter, or with peritoneal dialysis by putting a glucose solution via a catheter in the peritoneal cavity, we use that peritoneal membrane that envelops the organs and lines the, the abdominal cavity as a, as a filter. And that can do the same thing, remove fluid and provide chemical cleaning of the blood. So peritoneal dialysis is always done at home. It is a home therapy. But hemodialysis throughout the world is done in a variety of ways, either at home or through satellite units or through in-centre units where people just come in and they are dialysed by someone else. If the person's training and they're going to go home, which is our goal for everybody if we can, then peritoneal dialysis, they'll come into the dialysis unit here and they'll spend about two weeks with their training nurse. And we usually try and involve a member of the family, uh, whether it's a spouse or a partner or children or whatever. And those people get familiar with the training so they can support the person at home to do it. It's preferential because the person, there's greater flexibility, they're not having to fit in with a, a fairly rigid schedule and limited capacity in a dialysis unit. It means that they get the frequency and the duration of dialysis, if we're talking about hemodialysis, that gives them a much better quality of dialysis. So in terms of how well they do, blood pressure control, weight control, clearances in terms of when we do blood tests and look at, well, what quality of dialysis are we getting here? It's been proven that that is the gold standard. And in fact, we've recently had a letter from one of our patients who's just gone onto the program and she couldn't be happier and, and wished in some ways that we'd been able to implement it a lot earlier, which is great feedback, wonderful. It's, it's, it says that we've, we've, we've achieved what we've set out to achieve and now we maintain that. It's going really well and um, we're really pleased with how it's going. It, it's meant that people aren't being readmitted to the unit for, to sort out issues. Um, and in fact, people who have struggled to achieve one of the, the objectives of dialysis is to get to a certain weight and maintain that weight and, and try and not have the weight go up because fluid's accumulating in the body because the kidneys aren't removing it. And we're finding that we're actually, they're doing better at home than they did here where it was a limited schedule and as I was saying earlier, inflexible. So the feedback I got today meeting with the staff was that one particular person, the latest person to go home on the program is doing really, really well. And there was a degree of surprise in their voice because we knew there was gonna be a challenge there, but in fact, it gives us the capability to do more of what we need to do at home than we can do here, and so that's great. So remember, to help avoid chronic kidney disease, exercise and eat healthy. It's a step in the right direction. Now on the show, we have some tips on staying healthy this winter. So my name is Keith Reid, I'm a public health physician with the District Health Board here. So my, uh, my principal role is around uh, managing the effects of communicable diseases in the community. So trying to protect people from communicable diseases and trying to ensure that people who have communicable diseases are looked after in a way which means that they don't share them with the rest of the population. The th 
key uh, illnesses that we're going to have this winter are sort of cold type illnesses, influenza and gastroenteritis. Uh, and the, the best thing people can do is really is keep their bugs to themselves. So how do they do that? Uh, first of all, if you're unwell or ill in any way, you need to stay away from work or school. So you don't share your bugs with your schoolmates or your workmates. Uh, the second thing you need to remember to do is to wash your hands. And that's particularly the case for, for gastroenteritis, where you need to wash your hands every time after you've been to the toilet. Um, you should always be washing your hands before you're preparing food and before you're eating. When you're washing your hands, what you're actually doing is actually mis uh, dislodging the germs from your, from your hands uh, using soap and water to get the germs off the surface of the skin and then washed away down the sink. So you do need to wash your hands for a full 20 seconds and you need to make sure that you wash all your hands, not just your fingertips. Make sure you wash your palms, in and around your thumb and the back of your hands especially is an area which is often um, forgotten about. But 20 seconds is about singing happy birthday to me twice. Um, you might get some odd looks if you sing it out loud, so you can sing it in your head, but kids might find that quite enjoyable to sing it out loud and make it into a bit of a game. It's important that you dry your hands. If you don't dry your hands, then what can happen is that any germs which remain on your hands, you can then transfer them onto door handles and other hard surfaces where they can live to, to infect other people. So let's make sure that you dry your hands thoroughly, uh, both sides, and if you're using a paper towel, make sure that, that goes in the bin. If you've got a cold or a flu, you should be uh, using paper tissues to catch your sneezes and your snot, and you should be putting them in the bin, and then you should be washing your hands. If you don't have a tissue, and you can have a sneeze sneaking up on you when you don't have a tissue, then you've always got an elbow to hand, so you can sneeze like this into your elbow, and that catches the germs, it, it keeps them away from other people, and then you can go and wash your hands after that. Cloth handkerchiefs are just act as a, as a germ magnet and they're in your nice warm pocket. Germs which land on there just grow and grow and grow. It's important that hard surfaces are wiped down regu regularly. Uh, use a spray or, or, or a diluted bleach solution to kill any, any bugs which may have landed there. Make sure you keep them clean and keep them free of dirt. That's a good way of protecting your family and your workmates. I, mean, I think the, 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 the thing that's going to help you get through the winter is by looking after yourself, being aware of your body, um, uh, keeping warm, eating properly, um, exercising well. If you've got chronic health conditions, making sure that you keep in touch with your doctor or your primary care staff at your general practice. Um, and uh, don't forget to enjoy the winter. It's a time where you can get outside, you can enjoy the fresh air, you can enjoy the, the, the great countryside that we have in this part of the world and um, enjoy it with your family as well. Some great advice there about staying healthy this winter. We've reached the end of this episode of Better Health and hope that you've learned some of the great things that are going on within the Southern District Health Board. Visit www.southerndhb.govt.nz to learn even more about what's happening. I'm Melissa Hobbs. Thanks for joining us and until next time, Better Health. <laughs>